All right, guys, um, we are here talking about sales pages, and so I'm going to show you step by step the processes that you go through to get a sales page live and on the internet. So, what I'll be showing you is how you can take a sales page, whether it's from a private label rights product. I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to create a sales page from scratch, much like it's actually very similar to how you create your download pages, believe it or not. And I'm going to show you how to create a basic sales page from scratch, uh, but also show you how to work with the private label rights sales page. And the main focus of this is to basically get you to a point where you're comfortable getting your sales page online. So, I've got open here um, the software that we have talked about before called Composer. And uh, let me just go out here to the internet and show you um, Composer here. So let me just jump on over here, um, show you guys how to download it. And um, this has been mentioned on previous trainings, but if you're just jumping into this one, um, Composer is a software that we will be using. In fact, it's spelled with a Z, not an X. Um, that is Composer, K O M P O Z E R. And it is a free software. It's an HTML editor, much like uh, Microsoft Front Page or um, any of the, you know, like Dreamweaver, anything like that. It's very similar to that. It's an HTML editor um, that is free. It works with both Mac and Windows computers. So if you have a, a Macintosh, um, like an iMac or something like that, um, this will work with that. So. Um, you can also use this with the Windows, which is what I'm doing this on right now. So Composer.net, and it's absolutely free. If you have questions, you can just go to their screenshots or community, um, but make sure you spell it with a Z so you come across the right software, and it is absolutely free. So um, the first step of the process when you're actually doing anything involving sales pages is going to be for you to actually go ahead and upload, or excuse me, import uh, the sales page that you do want to work from. So um, in order to do that, when you open up Composer, it's going to look very similar to what you've got open on our screen here. And you're just going to come right on over here and click on Open. And once you click on that, you're going to actually see um, files. It's going to look very similar as if you were, uh, for example, working from, you know, let's just say, um, you know, if, if you're just in here and you were going to attach an email or something, attach a picture to an email or do something like that, you're going to browse your files the same way. You're going to go through your documents, your pictures, your videos, whatever you want to open with the software, but you obviously want to open the HTML document, which more than likely, you know, came in a folder or something like that if you have a pre made sales page done, which if, if you've bought private label rights materials at any time in the past, this is how you would go about and uploading it. So you're just going to go to open and go ahead and double click on that. So now that we've gotten that far, what we are actually going to do is we've actually opened it up here on our screen and this is what we've got here, you know, to work from. So this is a sales page assuming that you aren't creating one from scratch. This is assuming you're going to use a private label rights squeeze page. Uh, you know, obviously the most important parts of sales pages, you've got your headlines, you've got your sub headlines, you know, which are going to look like this. Uh, but we're not really doing a copywriting course here. What we're doing here is really showing you how the technical parts of getting this live and on the internet. Now, Composer does a great job um, if you've gotten any private label rights material in the past and have a sales page for it. Uh, and again, if you're putting a sales page up on live, your process is going to be extremely similar to this. Um, but basically, it's going to say, typically, they'll have something that says, like, your name. So right here, you're going to input your information here. So just go ahead and plug in your name here. Whoops. Let's uh, put that mouse down here. Okay, so from the desk of John Smith, for example. Uh, so obviously right there you would insert your name. And, and all private labor rights sales pages aren't going to look like this. Uh, they might have graphics with them at the top when you open it up. Uh, but you're going to edit them much the same way. You're just going to be typing out here. Uh, if you decide you want to change this headline or if you want to test your own headline, you can just highlight it like that. Just point your mouse, you know, click on your mouse and drag it over. And you can hit the backspace key to delete it, you know. Um, or the delete key, and then you can type in, you know, maybe you want to change that to the word uncover, for example, and just put your mouse there and type away. And if you want to edit anything, like change a space, just point your mouse. It's point and click simple 
which is why the software is so great. Now, you know, like I mentioned, if we're doing this with private labor rights, the the quickest thing you can do is browse through here, make sure there's, you know, the material looks good on the sales letter. Um, if you feel like it's something that will sell, then you don't need to focus too much else on editing it. But if you find something like, you know, hey, this um, maybe there's a swear word in the copy, and you and you obviously don't want to give across that impression, so you want to go in here and edit it. So I recommend you skim through any PLR sales page. Uh, but this is mainly a tech course, as we talked about. So, uh, but I mainly want to get across the point of the technical topics of you know how to get this live and on the internet. Now, um, if you're wanting to insert an image, uh, that process is very similar. So if I were to come here and decide, hey, I want to put a picture in here, again, you just come over here, much like you know when you did this with download pages, and you're just going to choose insert, and then you can choose image, or you can come up here and click on image right up here. You can add images to your sales letter, which is great. Um, let's say you want to add a, a picture of yourself. Um, you can just pull that up, you know, on your on your computer and just browse through that and upload a picture, for example. Like here's some sample pictures that we could put up. Um, you know, so let's just put in a picture of a koala here, for example. Um, it'll ask you if you want to use alternate text or not. So I recommend you just choose don't use alternate text and click OK. And obviously you want to resize that image quite a bit. So you can come on in here and you know resize that image to fit. All I'm doing is just pointing in the corners here and dragging it. So you notice that? If I want to add that to the center there, there we go. So now we've got a picture of the koala bear. So let's say um, we want to insert your picture next, for example. So let's come over here, go to insert image. And you don't have to have your picture on a sales letter, but it does help. It does help get people to recognize you. Um, you know, so let's say um, you want to insert your picture, for example. So let's just go ahead and this is a picture of you with your family, for example. So there it is. And you could just take this and resize it so that it fits. So it's thumbnail size. And it's very simple because you just upload it. You don't have to do much with the images beforehand. I recommend you do something like you try to resize them beforehand. Um, but most importantly is that it comes out and that it's not distorted or anything like that. So I've uploaded the picture and then you're just dragging around. So that's how you insert an image. A lot of sales letters you see the picture of the of the product creator. Uh, some people choose to put the picture clear at the bottom, you know, at the close. So they'll put in sincerely, you know, John Smith. And obviously at the end you want to change that to your name, make sure that's been changed. So let's come on in here and make that change as well. Okay, and um, right here, let's say you want to insert your picture there. All you're doing again is image, and you just want to insert the image onto your computer. Now, one thing that is important to note is that if you are doing any kind of editing with a private labor rights, you know, um, sales letter or any kind of sales letter, and you're actually inserting images, it's very important that the images that you're pulling from, like for example, this is my sales page folder. If I'm going to be using those images that I pulled just off my computer from maybe my pictures folder, for example, I actually would be best for me to actually put these fold these pictures here, for example, and to actually go ahead and move them to the directory that I'm working from. So I'm going to go here, and it would make a lot of sense for me to put it into this particular folder, because the reason is that it's going to actually be pulling those images from your computer. And so when you go to upload it online, you'll notice there's going to be red X's with your images. So a lot of people wonder, well, why is there red X's You know, when I try to load this up on the internet? Well, that's because it's pulling for the file from your computer. So um, what I recommend you do here, is that for example if let's say you've already you know you've already worked with this image but you had it pulling from your computer you want to come here now and just change this get rid of all that and the image location would just be the name of the image would just be the name of the image okay now if they ask you to do alternate text you can put in your name if you want that's a good idea if it's your picture you know John Smith and then just go ahead and click on OK or you could go here to advanced edit and do more advanced things, but we're just going to stick with the basics right here. And all I did there was just go in here and I've just changed it so that it actually pulls the pictures from the actual directory where the where the 
sales page is stored that you're working from because if you don't do that you're gonna get all those red X's it gets very confusing and very obnoxious you know so you just need to double click on an image um, or the best thing you could do is actually before you actually do anything with your images you want to move them go ahead and take your images and just move them from your folder here like if I'm in the sales page folder you just want to go ahead and move the pictures you know from your pictures folder wherever they're stored in your computer and move them to the folder where you're actually storing your sales page files. So you see here, this is the sales page I'm working from. I want to move my images to this folder. And the reason you do that is so it, when you actually go to upload them, when you upload, the, you have to upload the pictures along with your sales page so that when it goes online, it's going to actually show up, um, you know, show up the actual pictures, which is obviously what you want here. So now that we've accomplished that, we've got we've changed our name down here. I've showed you a little bit about how to edit it. Um, we're actually up to a spot where uh, it's time for you to go ahead and you know work from um, you know putting in your payment button. But one more thing I want to draw to your attention before we go to payment button is some of the features uh, built in here to Composer that actually enables you to you know make it look like a diff you know more authentic sales page or different things like that. Um, so again, you notice here this font is red. Now, for some reason, you decided you wanted to make the headline an orange color, for example, or you want to make it a random color, um, maybe purple, so it's different or something. Who knows what your theory is? Um, you decide you want to make that purple. You notice you can just highlight it. Very simple. You, you hold down your left click mouse and highlight it, just like if you were highlighting content on a page. Very, very simple. Point and click of a mouse. Come in here and pick your color they make it extremely simple like if you want to go with an orange um, sales letter obviously red tends to convert the best that's what we see the most but hey this is in case you know you decide you want to change something or, or you notice something you want to do different from everybody else so we can come on in here and let's just uh, we'll just go ahead and go back to the reddish color here and let's say you want to make the font bigger you'll notice here there is a larger font size or a smaller font size like let's say you wanted that to you know still stand out but not be as big so you could fix that or you wanted it slightly bigger than what it originally was so you just come over here to the bigger symbol and just double click on that and you think okay whoa that's too big so you could either come here which I think is easiest or you go up here to go format and choose size and you can actually go through extra small small medium large or extra large and in most cases for a sales letter extra large is going to be a pretty good size to go with extra large or extra extra large is going to be a good size um, now obviously if you want to resize it more you can just keep keep hitting that button um, let's say here you decide that you want to um, you know for example highlight a certain section you know so you want to make sure that is highlighted in yellow so all I've done here is I've grabbed you know highlighted this with my mouse by clicking the mouse and dragging it over and what I've done here then is just clicked on the yellow um, excuse me that the highlight key right here and I've actually chosen a color to highlight it with so that way it stands out so let's let me show you that one more time up here is you know it's a highlighter it lets you actually put in like a background there and we'll go ahead and pick our color here and let's just go ahead and click on OK and if you want to make this stand out more you could put like maybe stars or something like that over it so it really sticks out and now you've got this set up you know and ready to work for you in this way so what we're gonna do now you know that's that's how you add in like highlights you see a lot of that on sales letters um, let's say that you want to add in something like you know let's just say on the sales letter uh, you decide you want to add like a break or something, a hard line break, you know, so it kind of separates a certain part of the sales page. In order to do that, that part's a little more complicated, but it, it is still very easy to do. Um, like, let's say we want to put a line that's going to go between um, this picture here, this product, and this, this word right here. So we're going to remember um, what this word is, so introducing a special video series.